So, so you're gonna be there on in August. Yeah, dude, I won't miss it. And, and it like, sounds like there's gonna be quite a few people. Yeah, it should be a phenomenal time. Yeah, fun time to see a lot of people that we haven't seen, or at least I haven't seen in quite some time. And I'm finding out that like a bunch of people live right up by me and never knew it. Oh, really? Kelly uh, Hodemeyer, Sherry Kane. Um, there's a bunch of people that live up north. I had no idea. Where do you live then? Uh, 152 in North Oak. Um, so it's just north of Gladstone. I remember when we used to go drive. We get lost. We'd always run into that street up north. Parvin. Yeah. Parvin Road. My brother just landed on it the other night. He goes, I've never been on Parvin. I go, really? I said, I've been on there a few, a few times. Because every time we'd come home from Memorial Mall or Memorial Hall, yeah. I was like, we'd get lost. We'd do the same thing over and over again. Parvin and we'd end up road of all time. <laughs> yep yeah. that was all always from memorial hall we'd always do that we saw some good shows there oh yeah i was telling i uh, i loved to rub the one of my to my brother when we were driving near martin you're like dude Soundgarden's playing tonight i'm like oh yeah that's right they're opening for skid row <laughs> Let's go over. Let's go over to my house. See if my brother can help convince my my parents to let me go. We I mean, asked. We, we asked we him. Literally got tickets on the street. And we did. Yeah. And I we asked my brother. I was like, "You want to go?" And he goes, "No." I bring that up all the time. I'm like, you know, a phenomenal show that I saw one time. <laughs> I go. Cornell had his long hair. They did big dumb sex. I mean, it was awesome. He was like, "Shut up, dude." It was just as um, Bad Motor Finger came out. Like that was the album. They yep. Were and they opened with "Searching with My Good Eye Closed." Yep. Yeah. Yep. And they played big dumb sex. They yep. Played, uh, I, I, we should look up that set list. That was yeah, I, I would like to because I guarantee you, I there are songs in there that I wish I could remember hearing. I guarantee you, there was some good stuff there that. Because I was all, I, we were all focused on Bad Motorfinger, at least I was. Yeah, I, I wasn't into Ultra Mega OK. Yeah. I go back to it now and I'm like, damn, that's some pretty cool shit. <laughs> I don't know what I was not doing, yeah. but. Yeah, and that was Slave, Slave to the Grind tour for. Yeah, which was not their best album. No. Yeah. It was not bad, but it was, it was, he's a, he's such a tool anyway, the lead singer, Sebastian Bach. Yeah. I mean, just think about how weird of a show that is. Like, those are very different. Like, one's a hair band trying to survive, and the other one was trying to come up. Oh, I know. And it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And I still remember the 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 most epic show that a lot of us got to see. With the, the, the rage, oh, the rage, okay. quicksand. Oh my lord! I was just like, you've got to be kidding me! I I had a band. It was like senior band night or something something i had to stay back for and i had the ticket everybody else was in lawrence and my mom's like trying to get me out of the band thing during halftime she's like chris has to go and i was like thanks mom <laughs> jumped in my car and drove to lawrence to meet everybody got there right it was like five minutes before quicksand went on mm. and i was like oh thank god it was so awesome. That was an amazing show. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones we would have seen. I remember the day I I used to I used to uh, tell you guys never listen to the band on the day of the show. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allison Chase. Chase. Fucking dude. Up, I, I think I was dead yet, but he was trying to die. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, and what was the the show that I I was spending a night at O'Hara's, and you said the same thing and. No, it was it was the Allison Chains. They just canceled the show because of something. No, because he was fucked. Up. He was going. To well, you know that I saw one of his last shows. I am the morbid angel of rock singers and rock. Seriously, um, we, he opened up for Kiss. Allison Chains opened up for Kiss. Oh, wow. Um, the next that was his last show. Hmm. Brian Johnson for ACDC. Saw his last show. Uh, well, he's alive, at least. Well, he's alive, but he got kicked out of the band. No, he, he was. His uh, doctor said 
if you play one more show, you're going to lose your, your hearing for the rest of your life. And so he had to quit. Um, let's see. Okay, so Cornell. Um, that was the show at Starlight. He actually technically played one more show before that happened. But it, the Kansas City show was the one before the Fox Theater. Before he committed suicide. You mean the one in Detroit? In Detroit, yeah. Isn't it Fox? I don't know. Yeah. So it was Kansas City and then Detroit, and then that happened. Um, let's see. Who else do I have? I mean, I've got like a string of people. Everybody like, dude, don't take brain or do a show because <laughs> your favorite person may die. Or, or, like, or stop playing. Or stop playing. And it's just like, God. Mm. Kind of crazy. And, and Lollapalooza 94. Oh, the Lollapaloozas. Um, that was the Lollapalooza. Though. Oh, I, I know. Oh, I know. Nothing's better than Lollapalooza too. Yeah. Well, we went. Uh, we we went to two, didn't we? Two. That's what I'm saying. Lollapalooza yeah. two. Yeah. That's the best one. Yeah. It was. It was it me, you, Van Fleet, or was he not there until the second year? No, he was there. He was definitely there. It was a weird combo because I remember we stopped at some dude's house. Yeah, in Lake St. Louis. Yeah, Lake St. Louis. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was a... But well, we spent the night in Columbia, I think. We, because it was a friend of my brother's, a girl that he knew. Yeah. She had tickets, and my brother was like, I can't go, so they have three tickets. Oh, and three of us, then. Yep. So it was me, you, and, and Van Fleet. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and that was... Was that the year that we saw Tool on the second stage, or was that... The next year. I want to say it's the next year. I, I didn't see Tool at Lollapalooza ever. Yeah. Okay, so it was the next year. Um, I got to see... Uh, my brother went with me. Um, and it was Tool on second stage. Freaking awesome. Incredible. Um, Maynard was extra creepy that day. He was creepy early on. Was yeah, I mean, because you didn't know him. You didn't know really where he was coming from. He just... You didn't know his backstory. You didn't know anything about him, really. Yeah. So it made him extra creepy the well, way plus, he... I think he had a bunch of issues back in the day. And, like, he worked through them, through his music. And well, I, I, I think that... Oh, I know. Maybe that's true. But I thought it was an act. I mean, yeah, he was in the arts program and all that stuff with all those other guys. And I thought that was part of his persona. He still does it. Yeah, but he wouldn't like even talk to the crowd. It was the bass player that would talk to the crowd. Right, that's true. Yeah. Like he was like totally antisocial. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Who ended the night on the the second one? The one that we that was right. Was ministry there or was that the year before? Okay. Jesus and Mary Chain. Right. Ministry. Yeah. Who else was there? Soundgarden. Oh, okay. Was the Pearl Jam Soundgarden? Was that the year that we thought that uh, Temple of the Dog might have? Uh, yes. Okay. Of course we did. Yeah, because it was. And yeah. they did a couple shows. I think they played. They didn't. On our show, they didn't get together. We were like, well, Eddie Vedder was out in the crowd doing blanket tosses. Yeah. yeah. The girl that we went with, her brother was sitting there tossing Eddie Vedder up. And the, the guy, the kid didn't know who he was. <laughs> And then he was like, yeah, some guy named Eddie Vedder. And I'm, we're like, are you f seriously? That was a good time, though. Yeah. Good times. And I don't know how many Tesla shows we went to. Mm. I just saw them the other day. They came to St. Louis. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them. They weren't, as, they weren't as tight as they used to be. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Skio isn't in the band anymore. Well, that's good. I hated that prick. He was the one guy that I just goes like, dude, you're such an ass. Yeah. But uh, everyone else is, I think. Well, yeah. Was it Wilton? No. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. No, no, you're thinking of Queens, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Frank Cannon. Oh, by the yeah. way, yeah. so Steve Christie, the guy that my brother keeps talking about. Yeah. So when we went to Mind Crime, you know how they redid the... I saw that. When they well, you yeah. went with me okay. on that show. Yeah, that was awesome. He was the guy that was behind us, and I was sitting there talking to him, long-haired metal dude, mm -hmm. and I was like, Steve Chrissy, oh my God. And that was, yeah, he was right behind us. I remember us being on uh, 
stays right. Like we are up and we are looking down on right on, on their st- on their side of the stage, yep. on that side. Yep. Um, I remember them doing all mind crime and it was like fucking mind blowing. Yeah, it was the, how tight they were. It, they they were as tight, and I dare say this as Rush, but they were pretty damn close to as tight as Rush with their stuff. They sound right. Scott Rockenfield. Yes. Awesome, like Michael, awesome Michael name, Wilton. Michael Wilton and Chris DeGarmo. Chris DeGarmo's guitar player. DeGarmo was the best. He was, he was the best. He was the guy that made Queens right, as I f- later found out. Because once he quit, their music just went to shit. Oh yeah, he was clearly the songwriter. Yeah. You know, you can't go see Queens right without Jeff Tate. I don't think either. Now I went to go see J- Jeff Tate at this small, you know, Knuckleheads in Kansas City. Um, went to go see his solo deal it was kind of like a it wasn't a spoken word it was like an acoustic version of his music and then he played some queens stuff too and it was really fucking cool his voice is still in just phenomenal shape you have a band with him yeah it was like his some other band that he played with for a while and his son-in-law and really weird but it was really cool i mean he he was actually not an ass after the show i didn't know he was he known to be an ass yes oh, yeah pretty full of himself as a huge rock star singer generally is huh. so but he was really cool that night I and mean, like i said he still got the chops to do it very distinctive Oh, yeah. Like, you don't mistake him for anybody. Nope, you know exactly who it is. Yeah, yeah I was, my brother, Christy and his band want us to come up with some, uh, like, a couple songs that they want to learn that I want them to play. And I'm just like, all right, well, how about we do some Faith No More, um, some Queensryche, some Queen, and, you know, knowing that their singer can't do any of those. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm just kidding. Um, have you heard of the band Quicksand? I said, I might be able to pull one of those and maybe some Pearl Jam stuff that you guys can play. Um, you can't do Soundgarden. You can't do, you know, I was like, no offense, but I know your singer, I am sure can't handle that. And he was like, he goes, good call on that Mm. so they're trying to learn songs for this gig well they've got a whole list of stuff but they were like hey give us some of your own stuff that you'd like to hear and I'm like okay who's the dude that used to work at uh, what was it called Guitar World or Guitar what was it called back then Um, are you talking about uh, not Explorers but um the old drum shop and guitar no, place. Guitar shop over on, over like ninety fifth and Medcalf. Oh. I think it's called Guitar World. Oh, I didn't. I Who don't think. Who's the guy I... that used to play the intro to Wheel of Fortune? Was that him? Oh or God! He used to tell me about that. He used to say this guy can tap out Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I don't know. No, I guess your brother will remember that. I'm sure. I that part I don't know. He like worked there. He was a shredder. It might have been him. It it, it, it has to be Steve. Is he still a shredder? Yeah, he's he's still playing. He he was always you know pretty good. I've seen a bunch of videos of lately, and I don't know how I'm fucking getting hooked up with the guy. Um, but Scotty McBee. Yeah, he's gonna be there. Is he? Yep. Um, we made contact with him, and he's he's got a gig that night, but he's gonna try to come um, after the gig and then play as much as we want him to. Um, so he, hopefully, I get to see Scotty. I haven't seen Scotty in years. He looks and acts nothing like. Really? He's totally different. Really? Yeah. Good, bad? I don't know. Just I didn't recognize now, How are you getting in contact with no him? No idea. His, his Facebook stuff popped up on my thing, and he, he posted, here was some interview of him talking about he does this jam night Yeah. where people can come up on stage and, and jam with him. He, it's like every Wednesday or somewhere. Like, is he playing drums or guitar, or what is he doing? It looked like he was playing guitar. Okay, because I mean, he played with Ida Macbeth for a long time in Kansas City. Okay, um, jazz singer, um, okay. iconic 
jazz singer in Kansas Jim City. Was supposed to be him, and then the other dude, the drummer from that old band of his. No, not Justin Collette. Yeah, man. Mm. Well, who else is in? The, who else was in the group? Well, you mean Laughing Jack? Yeah. Justin Collette was the drummer. Um, he's Jason Pope's cousin. Yeah. Um, Andrew. God, I, I cannot remember Andrew's last it name. Be just, it may be Justin Collette. I, I mean, I believe it, but dude, he was. He was Ricky Rocket of the drummers. I mean, seriously. But I mean, if you saw Scotty now, you wouldn't even recognize him. I'm like, sure. He, he's like doesn't but look anything like he used to. Look I, like. I just couldn't believe that Scotty was playing with musicians that like that because that dude, he was wicked. Scotty, very talented. I mean, he could do just crazy shit. Yeah. Percussion wise, anything. Was he on the drum line and stuff like that? Oh yeah, he was. The, he was the leader. Then he put me in the leader, and then the band director didn't like me because <laughs> go figure. I had a mouth. Uh, I was supposed to take over Scotty's position when I did that. Mm. But yeah. Was he in high school? That's how he was ahead of us a lot. No, he was. Uh, yeah, he was two years. Was it two years or one year? I think it might have been one year, but dude, he was a percussion. Uh, he he taught everybody timpani, marimba. Uh, dude could just do anything. Yeah. Then he picked up the fucking guitar and started shredding on that too. Yeah. I remember his little cassette tape he recorded that we had. Yeah. We recorded those, or we were listening to that at the same time we were recording all those Guns N' Roses uh, outtakes. Yep. On cassette. Yeah, he, it, and he was the only guy that I really ever took lessons. And it was because he was trying to teach me snare to get into state. Uh, drum corps. Well, I was already on the drum drum line. But it was to try to get into symphonic band and to get into state competition because the band director wanted the leader of the drum corps to you know do all of that stuff. And... To this day, I'll tell you this straight up. I've never read music. Really? No. You just would listen to it and just play it? Yep. So, yeah. So, so I mean, literally. Um, so, Scotty realized that he goes, he goes, all right, play that. He just put it in front of me. It was a snare drum thing. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like really slow and chopping. He's like, Dude, seriously, this is like really easy. It's just so then I mimicked him and I did it right after him. He goes, "Oh, I get it." He goes, "You can read music." He goes, "But not very well." He goes, "But if anybody plays it for you, you can play it. You can mimic it right after." And I go, "He goes, you've got all the chops in the world. You just can't read." Yeah. That kind of I was like, "Yeah, I can listen to music. I can listen to a tape." And play it back um no problem i mean that's how i taught myself rush anything yeah. it was just over and over again listening to it and playing it but i i i wanted to learn how to read music because i wanted to play jazz so i started playing jazz a little bit and then kind of got bored of it and then quit that when did you stop playing drums? Well, I, d I mean, I played with Stuart in a band for quite a while. Um, I guess it was back in 2008 was probably when we finally, finally ended it. But yeah, we were writing our own mm -hmm. stuff and um, it was it was pretty cool. It was fun. So it was music ever, man? Um, no, we were never a cover band. I mean, it was straight our own stuff all over. I mean, I was like, I don't want to do covers. I hate doing covers. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we're doing anything, we're just going to write our own music. And that's what Stuart wanted to do anyway. So that's what we did. We actually recorded some of it. We've got some of it. You'll hear some of it. As what, much as... Um, at one of, well, the singer, lead singer had a house in Lake Lottawana. So we had, that's where we practice. And he had a really bad soundproof basement 
ish type thing. And Stuart had all the recording stuff, so that we put that upstairs. One of the bedrooms was my room to record stuff and the bass player. And the bass player and I played live together when we recorded. And that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? What happened? It just fucking took forever. Well, lots of mistakes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was like we would be okay and we'd be almost done with the fucking song and something would fuck up and I'm like, and so we'd, we'd do it again, we'd do it again, we'd do it again. Then we wrote, uh, Stuart and I wrote a song. He was like, I want you to do a drum track. Basically, you're going to be the focal point of this song. So I came up with this whole thing and I finally got it down after, I don't know how many hours I was just going around. I was just playing. So then I finally got something that I really liked. And then when we hit record, I fucked it up. Like I, it had to have been like 150 times. I was so pissed off. Then I finally nailed it. One day I was like, all right, we're, we're done. Come back tomorrow. I can't do it today. Come back the next day. First take. Fucking nailed it. It was fun though. Sometimes you just gotta hang it up. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting time. You but your clicker now. huh? Did you play your clicker now? No. In my head. Yeah, it's hard to do. I used to play when I was when I was doing certain things a long time ago. Scotty always wanted me to do a click track. I tried it for a long time. I was like, dude, I can naturally stay in, in tempo. I was like, w let me play a song for you. He'd be like, all right, if you change tempo once, I'm going to know it. And I'm like, all right. He's like, now you're right. He's like, you pretty much stay in tempo for everything that you play. He goes, but you should, he goes, it can expand, you know, what you want to do. And I go, dude, I got it all in my head. And he goes like, whatever. So funny. Oh, man. So how much, what did you play in college? I know you were in bands, but I didn't know what kind of music you guys played. Yeah, so I had um, a rock band, uh, two rock bands. One was uh, uh, pretty mathy. The other one was more uh, straightforward. Right. And, um, and then I had a hip hop group. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I have some recordings of some of that stuff. Nice. Yeah. Dude, you need to bust that out. Yeah. I'm sure I have them. We can, we can pull them up and put them on the speakers here and listen to them. But, right on. Yeah, I haven't listened to them through real monitors, so it'd be nice to hear what they sound like. In the, in I can the imagine. Set. I'm sure they're mixed like shit, though. I mean, it's all so was it just you and, like, how many other people? I mean... Uh, so the math rock outfit was a three-piece. It was me and then a bass player and then a drummer. And then the more straightforward rock group, it was... Uh, uh, and I had a real singer, um, uh, the drummer that's playing tonight here in St. Louis, um, the other buddy of mine that's here in St. Louis tonight, and then me, and then my bass player from the math rock group, so it was a five-piece. Right on. Um, and then the hip-hop group was me and this guy named Mark from uh, Ohio. He lives in uh, California, L.A. now. And then Ronnie. Ronnie, which Ronnie came over. Really? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, so I have some recordings of that stuff. Very cool. It's definitely not your straightforward, like, typical... Like hip hop, it's not like thuggish or anything. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's, it's clearly it, not quite Nelly type, you know, it's STL. Not quite Nelly, no, it's definitely yeah. more along the lines of like uh, influenced by, oh, I'm sure, like Faith No More and 311 and um, BC. Probably, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's definitely way different than all those because it's just such a weird fucking. There's like no verse or chorus. It's like literally just, it's bizarre. Right. But we use like, you know, analog synthesizers and real bass and real good. I, I track the bass and the guitars and I program the drum loop. So. Really? Yeah. Right on. So there's live instrumentation, but it's, 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 it sounds pretty crude. Yeah. That's awesome. That's fun. I remember when we tried to, it was me, Brendan Booth, and like a few other guys, because Booth wanted to, put a band together and I was like, all right. What year is this? Yeah, you know, this is like, it had to have been like 90, 
five. So right five, after five. we graduate, we graduated and we were going to Longview. And you went away like the SMSU or something. I did, but I st I went to Longview first oh, yeah. to get some of my core stuff out of the way, and then went to uh, Missouri State or S uh, Southwest Missouri State is what it was. Not SMSU, SW. Uh, SMSU. That's oh. what it. Now it's called Missouri State in oh. Springfield. Hmm. But um, yeah, we we got Ronnie to come in and do some stuff for us. I was like, really? yeah, I was like, dude, we got to get flip. We got to get flipped to, to be part of this. So he came over and he did some stuff. He could tell he's like, wow, these guys really suck. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Some of my best memories from undergrad was having Ronnie come into town and we'd spin this studio this electronic music studio where we had honestly like a bunch of really nice old analog synthesizers and turntables and a keyboard and we'd stay there the entire weekend until we got our song done really we just we wrote, we wrote it and we wrote, and we recorded it all there on the spot right on no idea what we're gonna do and we just fucking pumped it out that's cool those are fun that's fun when you can do that kind of stuff that's why i built this thing to be able to sit to have people over again i'm like okay let's re yeah let's try to live our glory days by playing music again so right on Have you talked to O'Hara at all? Yeah, I mean, we're, we text more than we talk. Yeah. But yeah, he's still, I think he lives in Lake Lottawana still. Yeah, he does. I think Van Fleet just moved out there. I heard he was going to buy a place. Yeah, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago they moved out there. He just came back. And, I mean, I, last time I saw him, I think he was in Dallas. Yep. Yeah. I actually saw him down there. We went to go see, I don't know, actually. I don't think we went to go see anything. I just visited him with him one night. But Monty... Oh, I don't know. We've had some funny. Him and Monty and I have gone on a few road trips recently. Yeah, yeah to go see shows. Um, not recently, but I would say within the past two years. We've yeah, been to a couple shows. And <laughs> yeah, they're interesting guys. I can imagine. Monty. I have not seen Monty in well, probably since we graduated. Maybe a little after that. I mean, he looks older, but he's. Totally the same, same guy. guy. Well, actually, I ran into him uh, at the Soundgarden show where we met everybody. I don't know if you went to that show. Um, it was at the Midland in downtown, and I met with Monty, Van Fleet. Um, I think Booth is there. It was, a, it was right when Soundgarden made it, tried to make a comeback. Um, that, that King... Uh, Last animal, time. Yeah. animal yeah yeah it was for that tour we all met up and beforehand and had some drinks and then went over there and saw the show O'Hara was there how was it it was awesome was it? yeah that's with Ben Shepard again yeah and it was a good it was a cool venue too it was a smaller older venue I don't know if you've been to the Midland at all, but I think I saw Shiner's. What was in Shiner's last show? Yep, yep. And I wanted to go to that. Shiner's playing again. I know it's what I see. When is that? September. Is it September? Yeah. I thought it was October for some reason. It could be October. I don't know. I just bought a ticket, so I don't. I I probably won't be going to many shows by then. Unfortunately. Right yeah. We got to figure out if Seattle can happen. I know. I mean, it's all about what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. It's uh, each it's each be, day. It's gonna be an endeavor. Yeah, I know. Getting a place. And... I'm I'm going to Pennsylvania this in two weeks, so I'm gonna see how travel goes with that. Um, it's a family reunion or wedding up in the Poconos, so um. Uh, it's my cousin is getting married. Um, Sean, I you don't know Sean, but he's a helicopter pilot, marrying into a very wealthy. They know all the NASCAR racers and all this stuff, and Moyer aviation and all this other shit. Really cool though. Um, 
so I'm gonna. This will be the first time that I'm traveling with for a week. Yeah, it's a long time. So. Is your wife going? Yeah. Kids, wife, and my mom. What about Steve? He can't. He just got a. He just got hired on by Edward Jones, so he's studying for the some test to get his license or whatever. I heard he moved back home. Huh? Yeah. Sounds like a rough time there. Yeah. Married seventeen years. Yeah. Yeah. Our, it, everything has just kind of been a shock. Everything in our family has just been. Is that why he moved from Chicago? Well, because of the divorce. Yeah, he was coming back anyway. Because of the separation. Yeah. So she's still there. Yeah, she's she's moving to uh, Michigan, Kalamazoo, Miss, Michigan, because that's where she's working. She was driving every week and would come home on like Thursday night, be home until Saturday, and then go back up to Michigan. I think that's kind of what did him did him in. Huh. <clears throat> but what was he doing? Up there? He was um, an underwriter, or well, actually, at the end, he was sales for a bank loan loan guy. So he he give people loans. Yeah, he would, he would try to get a loan officer. Yeah, he would try to go out and get loans. He was an underwriter for a long, long time. So. But yeah, it, and I moved my mom up from Lee Summit. So she's right, third. Yeah, thank God. That was the best house ever. I know. Um, but you know, they're widening Third Street, and they're going to have to tear that house down because of it's so close to the road. It's so fucking depressing. I know. Uh, but I had to get her out of that house. It was so old, and was, things were happening, and she couldn't take care of it. So, like, what? She is now 60, oh, 67. And what's she doing? She's living right down the, the road from me. She's still single? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and she was having so many eye problems. Um, had uh, corneal implant surgery twice. I was going down, taking her to doctor appointments all the time. She's had a corneal transplant? Mm-hmm. So she lost her corneas. Mm -hmm. So she has foreign tissue. Yep. And, uh, well, yeah, one then she got an infection that went bad. So they had to do it again. Um, but I was going down to Lee Summit, taking her to a doctor's appointments, then going back to work. And I was like, we're done. Yeah. You're moving up close to me. I can keep an eye on you. You can help with the kids. Um, you'll be closer to the kids. And that's what you want anyway. So. She sold Yep. How long ago was that? Oh, I guess it was about a year and a half ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. So. What's that with, the, with Dad? He's down the road from me. Um, he, my stepmom has Alzheimer's, so she's in a home. Um, she, he tried to keep her at home as long as he could. It just it wasn't working out. How old is she? <clears throat> I believe she's probably she's probably 67 or 68 so young yeah young to have severe Alzheimer's right it runs in her family though mm -hmm. so yeah. I'm sure I have that to look forward to that'll be fun my dad had severe Alzheimer's when he died really oh, yeah. when did he die um, he died a year after my mom, so let's see, if she died in December of 12, he was January 14. Okay. 15, 16, 17, four years ago. I never heard about that. Oh, yeah. I never, because my... My mom died uh, before him. Really? Because yeah. my mom was like, well, ask Patrick how his parents, because we hadn't heard anything. And I, I was just shocked. I was like, I... If if we would have known anything about it, we would have been. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty it was pretty low key, you know. Trying to clean up that whole fucking mess of getting all their stuff sold and then selling the house off was. I can imagine that. Yeah, it had to have been really hard. Yeah, especially when you're the only kid, you know. Because my sisters were already dead, so. Right. And I was I'm 
fucking had my family here and you know I had my business and, and then you know I had to try to just get rid of everything and it was it was pretty terrible but it was the alternative was terrible too the right. alternative was terrible at that point you know they were just one my dad he still recognized me but um he just fell off a cliff as soon as my mom died you know that's kind of how it was yeah. you know man life throws us turns my friend it's weird though it's weird that everyone I grew up with you know everybody my sisters all my nieces and nephews my parents everybody everybody except for Ed Reed you know and I guess my immediate friends there everyone everyone in that house is gone yeah I'm next in line well you're doing well so I'm hanging in there I'm doing yeah. yeah until I won't until I'm not Right. You never know. I could get well, bus later trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah I, I know all about all of a sudden waking up and going, what in the fuck? Coaching baseball to not being able to throw a baseball in a matter of freaking a month. It was just bizarre. This is in August of 17? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was getting ready to do something stupid and get into a baseball tournament for guys over 40 and I hadn't played in freaking 20 years. So we were like, all right, we need to start throwing and practicing a little bit and at least getting into some kind of shape. So all we were doing was before the kids practice, we would show up about 20 minutes early and we'd start throwing catch and Who's we? the other coaches and stuff. Um, and some of the guys that were going to be on the team. And now uh, we put it together. It was me and the head coach of Max's team. We put the, the over 40 team together, but yeah, just playing catch and all of a sudden throwing a ball and I was losing the ability to put pressure with this finger. With your right index finger. Yep. This one, this is what started it all. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. I, I, it's like I have no strength in this this finger. I'm like, your arm strength was fine. Oh, everything was fine. Yeah. Were you, could you notice when your writing was a problem? Or just no, not at that point. Not at that point. And so then the next time I played catch, um, I'd be able to play for like 20 minutes without any problem. Then it was 15 minutes that I could only play for. Then what 10 minutes. It was just because my it, that was when I would lose my ability to put pressure with that finger. But the time course from when you were able to go from 30 to 20 to 15 to 20. Oh, it was a, in a matter of like week, week and a half. It was it was happening all of a sudden just rapidly. And you were fine writing and stuff? Like you wouldn't perceive it unless you were trying to grip something. Yeah, I throw mean, a throw a ball at that point. And then I was like, okay, I've got a pinched nerve. Something is going on that sure. it's going to work itself out. I'll... I'll you know, do some stretching and some other stuff. See what, you know, it'll go away. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And then pretty soon I couldn't throw a baseball period to save my life. Like all your proximal arms? No, it was just because of my hand. You couldn't? It, it, it was, was it just... You're writing too? It started at, at, at probably at the middle of September is when it really started. I could notice my writing, but it wasn't that bad. I compensated for it. And, um, and it just, it just kept going downhill from there. I mean, everything, and it, it was really weird. It's like everything went into hyper mode as soon as I got the diagnosis. And I don't know if that was psychosomatic. I don't, I, I, dude, I don't know, but it kicked everything into fucking high gear. I got that second opinion at KU. And I talked to you before that, I think. Hadn't I? Yeah. I talked yeah. to you before that. Yeah. I thought you had had some lower extremity problems by then, too. Um, no, not really. Um, you said you'd, fall, you'd fallen playing basketball or something. Well, that, that was after, well, that was maybe after my first diagnosis. It was just, I was sitting there, and that was already when I had had some pretty severe hand stuff where my right hand was, I couldn't shoot a basketball anymore. 
so I was guarding, we was kids against fathers, um, just a fun game at baseball or basketball practice. And I went and this kid cut into the middle lane. And so of course I saw him and I, I mean, I quickly pivoted and stepped and I went straight down and I was like, wow. Okay. I don't know why I just did that. And then it was hard for me to get up and I was like, shit, you know, that sucks. I've never, ever had any problems with that. And was the fatigue that made it more pronounced, you think? Or I, I no, I just think it was muscle. It was just my, my muscle in that way, that certain muscle that would normally work at that moment, it, it wouldn't work because I, it's what's so weird is like certain muscles. I, I still have a lot of strength in, but it's the ones that really kind of support me. They suck. Had you not tried to get yourself up from a from falling down position, or not? You... Not since. I mean, it was that was the first time and that I had, noticed anything. And had you already seen a doctor by then? Yeah, Did I had. Everybody else around you know that this was going on, or no? Um. Well, my family. Okay. That was it. But no one even supposed. No one even thought anything of it. They no. That was that was after my first diagnosis. Uh-huh. Um, with ALS, and that was through St. Luke's, uh-huh. and then. It was before KU, and then we went to KU like a month later, and got the second opinion. Yeah, I remember you were waiting to have that appointment. Yeah. You ever talked to the guy? You talked to the guys here at Washu. They're my neighbor, right? You to to I tried to. Um, I called him. He called me. I gave him specific times because he asked me to give him specific times to uh, call him. He wouldn't call for like three days, and he'd call me out of the blue, and he's like, "Just email me." So. I was like, at that point, I was like, all right. So you never hooked up with him? No. Oh, that sucks. He, the stuff that I read that he was doing, I, I, he, I'm to the point of, is everything's happening so rapidly? Yeah. I'll take any drug that you give me, just in the chance, that, by chance, that I'm the one person that it fucking works on. Mm-hmm. I'll take whatever you have, but he's not doing any medication trials. Oh, really? He's doing more of research trials. So, you know, trying to learn more about everybody and trying to figure out what's causing, you know, that sort of thing, from what I understood. Huh. I now, Mayo, Mayo and some other places are doing actual trials on the Radicava stuff. They're in the third phase of the Radicava pill. They're almost there. But I, I, that doesn't mean much. Radicava doesn't seem to be. My neighbor is, a, is an MS specialist. Yeah. He's a neurologist. Um, and he said that he thought that the Radicava was better than his other, the other biologic that was out. It, it is. But it's but, like maybe, maybe six months. Yeah. So, so where, uh, I can't remember the name that I'm taking. It's like three months extended of your life. Radicave is like six, yes. and it's in, and it's like Super it's in it's it's in it's infusion, um, fourteen days on, fourteen days off, ten days on, fourteen or ten days off, for the rest of your existence. So half the time you're gaining, you're spending money the pocket. Right. So I was like, you know what? No, I, I just I I'd rather spend my time doing things with my kids or doing you know other stuff than trying to do that. Um, it just, it was a choice. If there was, if it was better than what it was, I would have, I would have done anything, but it just, after talking to a series of doctors and they all didn't give me their opinion, they just said, here's what we know about the studies. Here's what we know. They basically led us to believe that Radicava was just not, Hmm. that's weird, not really worth it. Yeah, I would think that they'd give you an opinion of some sort, though. To help. They, they didn't want us to sway our opinion of what to do. So they were like... They you should have some medical opinion. You're paying them for their opinion. They, they, they did. They gave us facts about what it was. Yeah. And we're smart enough to know, okay, what, we, what you're telling us is basically that it's not worth it. We, I mean, we could tell exactly what they were telling us. I mean, I think that's the challenge with any of these new molecules is like... 
you're looking at population-based data. Right. And you're not a population. You're right. You're one. And so it could be fucking gangbusters for you. Uh, I know. Absolutely nothing. Right? I know. So. I mean, that's why I, I, I would take the pill in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, I don't care how much it costs. Um, I talked about going to Mayo to see if they had any trials. I, I've got a, a cousin who just got into Mayo, um, Jacksonville, and they're doing a lot of stuff down there. And she's going to try to hook me up. She got into it how? She's a, God, I can't remember what kind of doctor. She just started in Mayo. As a resident? No, she's, she's not. Yeah, she. What kind of doctor? You don't know. I, I can't remember. But she was like, I know the some of the neurologists that are doing work with the ALS stuff. She goes, so um, I'll do everything I can to help you get into any trials or anything like that. Right. And they're actually doing a lot of stuff down there. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to, because a lot of the stuff what we're learning about ALS is that you have to be a year or two into it before you can get into a trial unless you know somebody but it's it's like everybody that I, the chat rooms and the blogs and everything everybody's talking about like yeah don't try to get into a trial uh, unless you've had it for one to two years and most likely by the time you finally get picked you're too weak to actually do the trial and that's what everybody's so angry about is like What's going on? Why can't we? I'm sure there's a reason. Um, I'm sure there's a reason. And there's always inclusion criteria with these studies, and they, you know. Yeah. But for you know, given the life expectancy of an ALS patient, you'd think there'd be a shorter, yeah. a shorter time to get in there. You'd think that there would be a whole lot of shorter things about the whole process, social security, everything. I mean, it's like it's crazy. Yeah, you've been working now, right? Yeah. yeah. So they certainly can get disability though. Yeah, but not for five months. Wow. And my long-term disability <laughs> doesn't kick in until six months. So we're... This, this was three-year insurance you had? Yeah. Long-term, that's nice. Well, it can be once I get to use it. But right. that's, you know, and in however long I'm still around, I mean, it, it lasts for two years, but I don't think I'm going to use all of it. Unfortunately. Well, we'll see. We yeah. I'm trying to stay positive, but as you lose certain things, more frustrating it becomes. I mean, I was, I was super positive when I first got my diagnosis. I was like, all right, I'm going to be, you know, one of the first people to beat this, you know, super positive going through each day not you know angry or anything like that and it's just been in the last month that i'm starting to really i mean i'm starting to lose my ability in my left hand once my left hand goes i, I i'm gonna need assistance purely um my walking is diminishing i mean i'm already it's hard for me to stand in one spot without sitting there doing a dance to keep my balance. Um, when I close my eyes, um, I'm losing balance. It's all, it's all the neurological stuff that's going on that I can, uh, you can, it's like, wow. And sensory, you're fine. Yeah. yeah it's all just motor. Yep. So I do stretching as much as I can. Um, and, you know, trying to stay as active as I can, but then not do, try to overdo it. That's the number one thing you can't do is once you start overdoing stuff, it actually does, it, it's a negative effect on it. So just got to be careful what I do. And um, I don't know, sucks. Well, I think we got to do as much as we can when we can. So obviously the voice capture is a big deal. I think you should take video. Yeah. That record, record me now. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely download the, the recording stuff.
I mean, especially as you lose, lose more proximal strength and you're not able to stand and you're not able to use your arms. Right. You're going to need to have the ability for it to come to you. Right. 